ladies and uh, gentlemen, Bungle, hope you're doing well and I hope you're having a great day. Today we are going over Easy Red 2. Now you may be wondering, Bungle, what is this game? What is this World War II first person shooter? Well, it's basically an arcade World War II FPS that takes aspects from Battlefield 1942, Enlisted, and various other World War II FPSs and it tries to make it its own. And what we're going to do here is kind of go over, you know, when you first boot up Easy Red 2, you kind of greeted with different modes. So how the campaign mode works basically is that every time you get a victory in a certain campaign mission, you unlock a new map and you kind of just proceed down below. And we had three different kind of campaigns right now. We had the Battle of Anzio, so you had the Allies versus the Germans, so this is basically an Italy campaign. Next you get the Battle for Kabbalah Jidlin, which is USA versus Japan, and this is a Pacific campaign. And lastly, you get the Battle for Kos, and this is Allies and kind of Italy, because this is kind of interesting, I guess, during the uh, Italian campaign during World War II. At one point, Mussolini fled north, and as a result, a lot of the Italians that didn't like him ended up switching over to the Allied side, and they're fighting against Germany. So it's kind of interesting. You have the Italian army versus Germany, and it's kind of an interesting campaign mode. Really, it's kind of one of those things, and I know a lot of my viewers did ask in and enlisted to kind of, you know, why doesn't the list have certain campaigns that aren't really talked about, right? And one of them was saying, like, oh, what about the Finns and the Russians going at it? And this is even one of the campaign theaters that I didn't even know was a thing. So that's pretty cool, and kudos to Easy Red 2 for kind of, you know, being innovative and doing something like that. Now let's move down and talk about the other modes. Now you have Mission Editor, which basically you can make custom maps and custom battles. So if you play Battlefield 1942 or you're in the modding community and you kind of like making your own maps and everything like that, well this is kind of up your alley. And then also you have Multiplayer, and Multiplayer kind of in my opinion is kind of dead anyway. There isn't really a lot of servers there anyway, and personally I feel this is more of a single player game, but that's just my two cents. Now the big question here is, Bungle, how's the gameplay? Well, basically, this is very unique in the fact that you can play in first person and third person. And funny enough, I find that shooting in third person is actually more accurate than it actually is shooting in first person. And kind of one of the big problems I found shooting in first person is the sight picture is just off. If you shot a weapon before, it kind of does the same thing when you're narrowing your sight picture. So you're focusing on the target in front of you, so everything else around you kind of zooms out but a lot of games don't really do that and it's kind of interesting seeing that so yeah it just kind of takes some time getting used to and the thing that I found is when I'm aiming with a sight picture I'm missing my shots but then when I go to the third person I'm just nailing every single shot I'm taking so I don't kind of, I don't really know what that's all about but yeah that's kind of one of the weird things I found when I was playing it um, one of the big things, too, is that the movement of the soldier is very slow, and it can be frustrating at times, especially if you're trying to go and, like, go prone or crouch or whatever. It just, it's very sluggish and slow, and you've played kind of like Red Orchestra 2, Arma, um, Hell Let Loose. Just imagine a very more slow version of that when it comes to moving your character around the battlefield. So, it's kind of sluggish. I don't know if, you know, this is still in, you know, work in progress and everything like that. But that was kind of one of the big problems I found playing infantry is just it wasn't that fluid like it would be in, let's say, enlisted. So another thing, too, I found when it comes to reloading weapons is that it doesn't automatically reload for you. You're going to have to reload yourself, and you also have magazine management. So what does that mean? Well, you're basically limited to how many magazines you have. So when you're using those magazines, if you run out of all you know, magazines, you basically are SLL unless you're near an objective that you just captured, and you can go and resupply from that. And first off, kind of how the gameplay or the game modes work is kind of similar to Enlisted, is that you have objectives that you have to capture. The attacking team has to capture these objectives. As they capture them, they get resupplied with more respawn tickets. And I think roughly they have like 75 that they, they use per objective. And then you just get resupplied each objective you take. The goal of the defenders is to go and dwindle down the attacker respawn tickets and basically have no respawn tickets left, and then the, the defenders win. Now, another thing that I found, too, is that the vehicles are actually pretty fun and unique. Uh, one of the things I saw was an M5 Stewart with a flamethrower. And another funny thing, too, I've never seen this actually modeled before, is a rear turret facing machine gun, especially on the Japanese tanks. So it's just pretty funny seeing stuff like that, whereas in a lot of other World War II games out there, and it's funny enough, like in Enlisted, you do not have a whole machine gun. While, while in Easy Red, we have a M5 Stewart that's able to go in any other tank 
be able to fire their whole machine gun. So just little factors like that, um, definitely very, very unique, very impressive. Uh, for one, vehicles have a damage model, so if a tank too, takes too much damage, the crew's going to automatically bail out. This is kind of similar if you play like Men of War or anything like that. If your crew takes too much damage in the vehicle, they automatically just bail out and have to repair the vehicle, or they're basically just kind of SOL, especially if they're in the middle of a fireball. Um, aircraft, now, aircraft have bombs, and they're able to dogfight. Now, the flight model on the aircraft, I feel, is all the same, so not one aircraft is better than the other, or better at this, better than that. They all kind of play the same. Um, it's a very simple flight model, and it's easy to turn. Now, another thing I found, too, when playing infantry or whatever, is that there's suppression effects, too. So there's explosions and rounds being fired at you. Your accuracy and everything, you're going to be kind of blurry and stuff like that, and your character is going to be a little disoriented when that's going on. Another thing I found, too, is that if your player takes a hit, there's an animation going on indicating that he just got hit with a round, and then also their weapon starts swaying all over the place and everything because it just got hit with a bullet. Um, you also have the ability to go and kind of patch yourself up. There's also an ability to go and revive friendly teammates, so I thought that was pretty cool. Another thing that I found interesting, too, is that when a soldier dies, it also displays how long they lived. Um, I guess, you know, it's a little feature they have, like, in, I think, Battlefield 1 when you play the first intro mission or whatever, so that was pretty unique. Um, another thing I really like about it, too, is that old squads, vehicles, and everything uh, come unlocked out of the box. There's no, like, progression or anything like that. There are preset squads, like paratrooper squads or infantry squads, anti-tank squads, tank squads, plane squads. Everything's just preset everything's unlocked so you don't have to mess around with it at all so very simple you just pick it up and you just take it get you take it out of the box you're good to go and just play another thing i found interesting too is one of the missions on the battle of cost you kind of start off as a glider i mean it's automatic you can't control it but it just flies in and it's pretty so when we talk about graphics in this game of course it's not going to be like battlefield 5 war enlisted where it's going to be you know knock your socks off it's amazing it's beautiful to look at everything like that I've played a bunch of different games over the years, like Trails in the Sky, East, and all those games. So my expectations on graphics, you know, there comes a point where graphics versus gameplay, right? And that's also, yes, graphics can hinder gameplay depending on how bad the graphics is. From my experience playing this, I didn't really feel like the graphics were that bad. I'm playing on high settings. I use a 2080 Ti. Uh, one of the things I did find was optimization was a little off, so maybe they can work on that a little bit because there were points when my frames would drop. But generally speaking, I mean, this is, in my opinion, an early access kind of a testing game that's a work in progress. And for just t eight bucks, honestly, a lot of other games out there that I picked up that were either World War II-ish or, you know, for this price range does not have the amount of content that this game does. And also the gameplay is actually pretty fun. Yes, there are stuff that needs to be worked on, but generally speaking, the graphics I felt didn't really detract my experience. Like I said, I played other games over the years with way worse graphics or, you know, very simplified graphics. So for me, it's just more of a gameplay aspect. If the graphics get in the way of the gameplay, then that's when it's a problem. But generally speaking, I didn't really notice it that much um, compared to, like, let's say Enlisted. Yeah, Enlisted has better graphics, but here, you know, they're really affected that much. If you're a graphics person, of course, and you really like Battlefield Five and enlisted graphics and you're gonna play this game you don't like the graphics and yeah maybe that might be a turn off for you uh, another thing too about sounds the sounds in the game i mean they're okay they're nothing amazing like war sounds or anything like let's say from war thunder
Well, Ashley, do I recommend this? Do I, do I recommend picking this up? And personally, in my opinion, I think this game has a lot of potential. I do see the developer engaging with the community, engaging with other content creators for feedback and everything like that. And I feel that if that developer continues to do that and continues, you know, kind of learn, let's look at like Final Fantasy XIV, where the developer and the community have a good relationship, then I could definitely see the game doing very, very well. Of course, there's kind of problems that need to be worked on, like the gameplay mechanics when it comes to infantry and everything like that, and kind of reworking, I guess, the sight picture stuff, and uh, reworking kind of just the animations and movement and everything like that, making it more fluid. But generally speaking, um, and also the gunplay, I feel like the gunplay needs to be worked on too, because, you know, my opinion, I just would like a more accurate sight picture when I'm shooting. I feel that I'm more accurate in third person than I am in first person, which, I mean, my opinion, I, I don't think I should be able to just run around the battlefield in third person to be more accurate, but that's my two cents. I do appreciate the third person aspect, though. That's pretty unique. But I can see there's a lot of care in this game, that this developer has actually worked really hard. And I can't, you know, when I was first playing it, I know I was reading the Steam reviews and a lot of people were just dishing on the game with, oh, this is not Battlefield 5 graphics. I know some people were just in the, you know, oh, this doesn't look like Battlefield 5, so or the graphics don't look good, it's just not going to be a good game. But when you go play it, test it out, play it for, you know, an hour or so, and then start getting into it, then you realize, wow, actually there's a lot of care, there's a lot of mechanics that this developer went out of their own way to do. And this game does have a lot of potential, especially using a lot of campaigns and theaters and stuff that we don't really see in a lot of other games, especially in Listed. Listed doesn't have anything at all with a Japanese campaign at all. So it's pretty unique having this stuff. Um, definitely moving forward, it has a lot of potential. I think for how much I paid for it, I think it was like eight bucks. Like it's a total steal. Definitely would like to see more content. It's definitely see more campaigns. Um, but yeah, I, I actually really do think this is fun this is a great game just to go play and like kind of turn your brain off and play um it's really good to relax and unwind and honestly that's all you can really ask for my game it's enjoyable I, I didn't have a problem with it at all highly recommend picking it up if you want more content or me just to do kind of some gameplay of some missions and everything like that let me know down below and i can easily go and shoot that but yeah i really did like it highly recommend maybe picking this up or checking it out it's very cheap anyway and it's on steam so you can go play it but let me know your thoughts. I think, you know, so another thing too with the gameplay that I found pretty unique is that anytime you died, you would also have the ability to respond to another crew member or another squad member. So it was kind of like enlisted with the squad mechanic that you can basically switch around different squads. You can constantly engage in the battle. There was no respawn timer when you got killed anyway. Just constant combat. And I really, really, really liked that. But I've reached this point of video, new viewer, possibly new subscriber. I hope today is the day that I earn your subscription. Have your sub and mash that like button. It does help me with the YouTube algorithm. Returning sub, returning viewer. Let me know your thoughts. What do you think about this game? You think it's good? Do you, you want? Do you want to see more gameplay? Other than that, I hope you all have a great day. Take care.